Years ago, when this channel just started, a lot of videos were super hypothetical, and many of them were actually about Mars, specifically about trying to terraform Mars using various simulations and using various hypothetical scientific concepts. And back then, nearly a decade ago, a lot of these ideas were super popular, mostly because back then there actually was a lot of talk about how we could potentially terraform Mars with a lot of different scientific studies coming out at the same time. With a lot of this culminating with the ideas by Elon Musk. I think he actually proposed nuking Mars because somehow this would make things better. I mean, I don't think it would, but um, yeah. Anyway, one of the best ideas though was actually using a somewhat unusual gas that technically we could produce on Mars and that's known to be an extremely effective greenhouse gas. It's known as sulfur hexafluoride and it's actually a gas that technically we can breathe and it's also a gas that makes your voice extremely low. Basically, it's the opposite of helium. There's a really old video by the Cody's lab who even tried this himself by comparing helium voice with sulfur hexafluoride voice. If I find it, I'll put it in the description below. But the point is that there were some really good scientific ideas on how we could maybe terraform Mars after all. Or at least initiate the terraforming process by basically warming up Mars first. Mostly because that was the biggest problem. It was just a little bit too cold here, with the temperatures on average being about minus 65 Celsius, minus 85 Fahrenheit. And though obviously there are some other problems, like for example, not enough gravity to hold on to certain types of atmosphere, in case of sulfur hexafluoride, it was actually heavy enough to easily survive on Mars. With the other issue being the solar radiation and relatively powerful cosmic rays, which in this particular image even shows us how it actually strips the atmosphere from Mars, which is how we believe Mars lost its atmosphere, potentially solvable with some kind of an artificial magnetosphere. And we've discussed one of these propositions with, for example, this one right here by Jim Green, a NASA scientist, being created by placing a relatively simple magnetic generator in the Lagrange point of Mars. I think I made a video about this as well, and it should be in the description. And so the point is that there were so many different ideas, so many propositions, and quite a lot of them were technically not really science fiction and were based on hard science. But in many of these cases, they would still require a major leap in engineering on Mars and a relatively large amount of raw materials that would be required for a lot of these constructions. For example, in one of the ideas, someone proposed using one of the Martian moons as a potential base for a possible magnetosphere as well, but that would require an enormous amount of facilities on the surface of, for example, Phobos, that would then have to be maintained using a lot of energy. And so many of these ideas would be somewhat difficult to implement, just because we actually have no means of bringing so much to Mars right now. And so things like, for example, building huge mirrors or pumping methane in the Martian atmosphere, though sounds realistic, is still beyond our abilities. Nevertheless, certain ideas are actually a little bit more feasible than others. And in this video, we're going to discuss one recent idea that's actually a lot more feasible than anything we've heard so far. In this case, once again, focusing on trying to warm Mars up because this could then introduce a lot of water on the surface and possibly melt a lot of CO2, maybe some other gases, and thus even increase the atmospheric pressure. And here this new proposal relies on an unusual model involving greenhouse gases, but in this case based on nanomaterials. And more specifically, tiny aluminium rods, approximately 9 micrometers in size, that when modeled and simulated, seem to provide an extremely powerful greenhouse gas effect without technically being a gas. With the simulations and the modeling showing that even a relatively small dust cloud containing these aluminium particles, in theory, could actually warm Mars by about 30 degrees Celsius in just a few months, basically leading to a dramatic shift in climate in practically no time. But naturally, they would have to be perfectly designed and would have to be just the right size in order to create these effects and in order to be able to levitate just like typical Martian dust. And so here the size is about 9 micrometers by 160 nanometers across. And turns out that once you release them in the atmosphere, they can be easily picked up by the wind and carried away from the surface of the planet into the upper atmosphere. And it is here that they can then circulate for possibly up to a decade 
trapping all of the heat from the surface and playing an enormous role in warming the planet up. And interestingly enough, the modeling even showed that the overall increase in temperature and pressure over the next few years would potentially be high enough to not just melt the caps on Mars and produce locations with liquid water, but it may also create conditions where certain bacteria from planet Earth can easily survive. For example, oxygen-producing bacteria that can then start producing oxygen, thus slowly terraforming the planet. Now, obviously, this is not going to turn Mars this way just yet, but it will definitely transform the atmosphere, producing tiny pockets of liquid water. But even more surprisingly, apparently, we would not even need to produce that much to make this effective. So, for example, assuming these particles can survive for at least 10 years, we would only need to release about 30 liters per second across the entire Martian surface in order to make Mars warmer by approximately 30 degrees. And that's like thousands of times lower in terms of manufacturing and material than any other previous idea. And because these particles would then basically act like typical Martian dust, these particles would then just start circulating everywhere and would take quite a while to disappear. Now, obviously here, we would still have to somehow manufacture all of this on Mars, but the actual effort required is dramatically lower than anything else. As a matter of fact, technically, we could even get away with just building one of these factories if we can find a large enough aluminum deposit in the area. But naturally, there are still some uncertainties about this as well. For example, right now the scientists have no idea how these aluminum rods are going to react to things like, for example, water particles. There is a possibility that maybe a lot of water is going to clump around these aluminum rods, falling back on the surface as a kind of a unusual aluminum rain, which would obviously result in much lower greenhouse effects, but potentially produce some extra water, although I guess in this case, somewhat contaminated with aluminum oxides. On top of this, we would still have to have some kind of a magnetic field in order to prevent more outgassing as a lot of this water evaporates, and we would also have to figure out if these aluminum oxides can potentially cause any other dangers or possibly be toxic to bacteria that we want to bring here to create oxygen. Nevertheless, this relatively simple idea, in theory, can increase temperature, can also raise atmospheric pressure, allowing liquid water to exist, and may even cause rains on Mars, thus increasing water levels in regions that were previously dry. But when it comes to terraforming the entire planet, there are still quite a lot of unresolved challenges. For example, one of the biggest ones is when it comes to the soil itself. It's technically toxic. It's filled with perchlorides, various compounds containing chlorine, and not a lot of stuff is going to survive in this if we just decide to, for example, plant something here or even bring bacteria. I mean, there's a reason we usually use chlorine in swimming pools in order to prevent bacterial or algae growth. And here you have the entire planet basically covered in it. On top of this, the global Martian storms can be a huge nuisance and they can maybe even become worse if we have these aluminum particles in them. Obviously, we have no idea what the effect is going to be, but it's unlikely to make these global storms any weaker. Not to mention the high ionizing radiation, for which we don't actually have a solution just yet, and the overall reduced light levels compared to planet Earth which might affect different types of algae and different types of plants. But all in all, it's still a really exciting proposition and something that theoretically could be one day materialized, assuming we can actually build something large enough on Mars. And so I guess until someone else comes up with something even cooler, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the other previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.